Hey guys, Corbin here, and I want to show you how to make your own kitchen cabinets by following along with me making my own. What you see behind me is an example of what I'm working on. These are the first portion of cabinets that I'm making for my own kitchen. I'm doing it in phases, so I've already completed one portion here over by my stove. And next, I'm going to be building the island with the sink, and you can follow along as we do that. So, let's check it out. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to assemble the bases that give your uh, kick area underneath the cabinets. And I'll zoom in on the plans. So I cut pieces of plywood because plywood's a lot easier and cheaper to use, I think, than actual um, just solid alder for me. And so I only have one side which is gonna have a 45. That side I'm gonna do biscuit joint and then the rest will just be pocket hole because you won't see it. All right. Before cutting plywood, I swap out to my dedicated plywood blade. It has a lot of teeth and leaves a much better finish than the combo blade would. I then rip and cross cut the plywood pieces, labeling each with a piece of blue tape. I generally use the off cut pieces left over from cutting the side pieces of the body. This helps maximize my plywood use. I also use cheap plywood for the portions that will not be seen. In my model, I t texture the cheap plywood in a different color to more easily distinguish which portions aren't going to be visible. For the portions that will be seen, I can use a B-graded plywood with a horrid backside since the kick area is pretty hard to see and you won't ever see the backside of the kick area. I have 145 degree to cut and to support the joint, I am going to use a number 10 biscuit joint and it just has a little bit of strength and it's pretty easy to do. So before I cut the biscuit, I set the biscuit machine, biscuit joiner at 45 and I'm just going to do a single one. Put one mark on the inside, roughly in the center. It really wasn't the center but that's okay. After I do the biscuit on the 45, the others are just going to be pockable, so I'm going to mark that and cut those and drill them. Craig Jig. I then drill out two pocket holes for each joint. I'm going to point out a few things I do to keep the pocket holes aligned while I put the screws in. I first put on a bit of glue and then use the Craig pocket hole clamp to align things up. I squeeze it tight with a clamp and then screw the screw in. The screw choice is important and for plywood you should use coarse thread screws. I work my way over to the side with the biscuit joint and the 45 degree cut. The 45 is difficult to clamp so I use a simple strap clamp to hold it all together while it dries. After about 30 or 45 minutes, I remove the strap clamp and flip the whole thing upside down. I use the portable Craig pocket hole jig to drill some holes that I'll later use to attach the cabinet bottom to this bottom kick portion. Now that the kick area is made, I can move on and make the cabinet bottom. Normally we would just use a simple piece of plywood and the face frame would cover up all the edges. However, my design, the bottom edge would be exposed, so I have to hide the ugly plywood edge. I use a tongue and grooved matched router bit set for this operation. One trick I use is to stick a half inch roller grommet in the collet holder. The bits need to sit at exactly the same height to match correctly, and the grommet allows me to easily set the same height. I just have a little grommet that I put into the bottom of this guy. And then I can put my bits in it and they're exactly the same height every time I put it on. So that's just a nice little trick I do. I wrote on the top what I do here, which is the groove first and then the tongue and put the good side down. Awesome, let's do it. I like to cut the groove first 
I set the height to be roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be exact since the bits are matched, but you have to remember to not change the router height when changing the bits. I groove the smaller edge piece first and then tongue the plywood afterwards. It's important to keep the same sides down that you want to be matched, and my general rule is good side down. After the tongue is cut, I do a test fit. If the piece doesn't quite fit exactly, I can run it through again, and this usually corrects any mistakes that happen. After it is glued up and dried, I have to plane down the bottom. This is because 3 quarter inch plywood isn't quite 3 quarter inch, and it's a bit thinner. I can then apply some glue to the kick base and screw in the pocket holes to attach the cabinet bottom. I do this upside down and it is easy to accidentally attach to things in the wrong location. So I usually add marks on the side to line things up and ensure I don't make a mistake. The location of the kick base isn't 100% critical, but I want the back to be flush and the sides. And so I just clamp it down to make it more stable as I drive in the pocket hole screws. I then cut the plywood side pieces. I use the track saw to make the plywood more manageable and then usually do the additional cuts on the table saw. I use biscuit joints to attach the vertical cabinet pieces such as this side. The side that lines up with the edge is really easy to cut. I don't have to do anything fancy with the biscuit joiner. I first place the piece where I want it, mark off various lines to add say 4 biscuits, maybe 5 and then I cut them out with the biscuit joiner. The portion of the biscuit joiner that moves up and down is called the thickness plate. The portion that the blade comes out of is called the face. The thickness plate can be set at any angle and I set it 90 degrees from the face of the joiner. I align the thickness plate on the lines I previously marked off. This will ensure those two portions will line up properly with biscuits, since the thickness plate is placed on both the sides I want to line up. As usual, I'll go ahead and test the joint to make sure everything lines up properly, and if it doesn't, I will just cut them again and it makes the joint a little bit looser but they tend to swell up and it doesn't seem to cause a problem. Okay that was easy enough to do. The middle pieces are more difficult since there isn't an area hanging over that I can line the thickness plate up with. I measure and mark out where I want my vertical piece to be located and then I just hold it in place. And while I hold it in place, I mark out where the biscuit joints should be. Now the camera angle is terrible, so let me drop in a picture of the model to show what I'm doing. I'm marking the cabinet bottom with the red lines and the interior vertical piece with the blue lines. I'm going to put a biscuit at each location. After I mark out the biscuit locations, I clamp a scrap piece at the marked location. The vertical piece will back up against the scrap piece. This piece hides the red marks on the bottom, so I have to extend them a bit so I can see them. Okay, now you can see me extending the marks on the bottom piece. I then clamp this scrap piece at the desired location. I'm not doing it here, but another tip I have is stick a 2x2 under your cabinet bottom so you can easily clamp things without having to lift it up. I then go ahead and cut the biscuits, aligning the bottom of the biscuit joiner up with the scrap piece. The vertical piece needs to have a matching biscuit hole at each location marked out with the blue lines. I rotate the piece with the blue lines facing down against a flat surface. I then extend the marks as they are hidden. I can use them to create some biscuit holes and by doing this they will line up with the bottom piece holes exactly. As usual, I do a test fit with the biscuits to make sure everything lines up correctly. Next, I use the same concept to align the side pieces up, which sit slightly lower than the bottom of the base. And so I clamp along a scrap piece on the bottom, which is the area where it needs to sit below, 
and then I can use this to cut my biscuits with. I just drew a line on the side piece and then I clamp a side piece on or a scrap piece on the top of my base. This will allow me to use the biscuit joiner aligned to the scrap piece and cut some biscuits into the edge of the plywood on the base. So I really should have clamped the whole thing down because every time I push the biscuit joiner forward, it moved the whole base forward. But, oh well. For the side piece, I clamp a piece of scrap right above the line where I want the biscuits to be. And then I go ahead and use that to line the bottom of the biscuit joiner up with that scrap piece. And I cut the biscuit holes. By having the bottom of the biscuit joiner in the same relative location, the biscuit holes will be aligned up and everything should fit nicely. Before glue up, I usually like to drill out my shelf support holes. I find it pretty easy to simply mark out the location with a ruler or tape measure. I then tap it with a punch or a nail so that the drill will run true. I drill out the holes with a stop collar on the drill bit so I won't drill all the way through the plywood. After drilling the holes, I sand the interior with 220. Sometimes I have to hit the rough spots with 150, but the good quality plywood needs very little sanding. There's nothing too fancy about the glue up. I like to use a lot of glue and I wipe off the excess with a damp rag. I also scrape it a bit with the corner of an old utility blade. After I get one clamp on, I like to align the pieces with a framing square. It is important for the clamps to have it set pretty close to 90 degrees, otherwise everything will end up being a little bit off. I can sometimes rack the clamp to the left or the right to adjust the angle until it is just right. The glue up of the middle piece is the same, but clamping requires some creativity. I can get two clamps on each end, but the metal needs some downward pressure. I do this by sitting a 2x4 or 2x6 on the top and clamping each side down as shown. This takes some careful finesse to do it by yourself, but it isn't too difficult. All the vertical pieces were glued in using similar techniques. Now the majority of the base is done with the vertical walls done. In the next episode, I'll be attaching the face frame and completing some of the other details like the sink support and the back. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to encourage me to make more videos. Bye everyone.